Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? If we can. Um, <laughs> because this is the exact kind of shade of color that uh, my camera just uh, can't handle. So, I'm already pretty sure that I'm going to have to uh, scan most of these pictures in, and maybe I can find a way to separate the audio and uh, just overlay the pictures or something. But yeah, so whatever my solution for that is, note here. But yeah, uh, so today's ink is from the Pelican series of uh, Edelstein. Uh, sorry, my German is terrible, but uh, Edelstein? Edelstein? Uh, no, it's not Edelstein, it's Edel Edelstein? Something. Anyways, it's Jade. Um, this is a very interesting color. It's the camera's just turning it green, but uh, it's a beautiful sort of yeah, like aqua jade color. Um, yeah, it's a it's a light soft green. I actually quite enjoyed it to the point that it's actually still in one of these pens. So, anyways, uh, speaking of pens, this is my only Pelican, and I quite quite love it. It is a it is one of the M two hundreds. Uh, but this one has an italic nib. And let's see what we got here. Yep, still runs. If only I could put my hand down flat and actually get it on the paper. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely color. It's it's quite intense. I'm, I really liked it. I think it's going to stay in there until it runs out. But So that was one of the pens. And then this is a Pilot Metropolitan with a Japanese fine nib. Now, these Japanese fine nibs kill me. Uh, I'm terrible with them. It's like trying to write with the corner of a razor blade. But, um, yeah, so that's quite a contrast. We've got what I think is, is something like a 1.3, it's larger than 1.1, 1 .1, uh, italic nib. And then we've got a Japanese fine, which is like writing with the corner of a razor blade. So, that's going to give us some contrast. Now, uh, let's look at some comparisons. Because I know I'm going to have to cut photos and I might paste this a little in oddly, but anyway. So here's Pelican's Edelstein Jade and Diamine's Dark Green, which if ever there was a lie, <laughs> it's that. Um, this one is, uh, Dark Green is maybe a bit darker uh, and maybe just a little bit more green. Uh, next up is Private Reserve DC Super Show Green which is maybe just a little bit more yellow, uh, particularly in some spots, but yeah. Next up is Diamine Soft Mint, which is very similar. I'd say a little less saturated and maybe a little lighter. And lastly is Gerobin's Vet Reseda, which is way less saturated, but actually quite similar. Like if you look at these darker areas, Looks quite like the medium areas through here. So yeah. If you're familiar with any of those, you'll recognize Jade. Now, uh, bear with me. I'm going to attempt to zoom in and that's never graceful. Yes. So the one here on the right with the D up in the corner, uh, that is the one that I let dry, which is not how you're supposed to do it. But yeah, um, as you can probably tell, it really didn't make a whole lot of a difference. Uh, so this one on the left, you can barely, barely make out where that first drop was put. And then the, it's actually fairly bare through there, uh, and then it goes up. And there's not a lot of variation in color. Like, pretty much the color that you see, that's what you get here. You know, you don't have the ribbons of separation of different facets. Not really. Now, the one that I let dry, the vaguest little hint of gray that you see down at the bottom. E Maybe got darker, tiny bit. Really not a whole lot. Not a lot going on there. Okay. Now, let's look at some resistance tests. So, here's uh, water resistance, which, as the chromatography pretty much implied, doesn't exist. Uh, one third bleach solution really, really got rid of it. As, it's almost as if it was never there. Uh, ammonia pen flush got it moving as well, but since it's ammonia, it started to react with the paper. Same with hydrogen peroxide, which actually started to break the paper apart, and so I stopped that up pretty quickly. Yep. 
Now, paper test. Top down in density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix this in post. Uh, anyways, here we actually get some very nice shading and uh, I want you to see this. We get this very noticeable halo effect, which is that dark outline around the wettest parts, which is a kind of shading that I really enjoy. Um, it just creates more contrast, uh, you know, it draws the eye a bit more, and it actually, you can see a little bit of it in the fine, it's just since the line is uh, broader with that italic nib. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite like, I, 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 quite, quite, <laughs> I can speak English, I quite like it. Um, and we do get a little bit of shading through here. Now you can see the lines through the quadrilateral paper, however, it doesn't necessarily feel undersaturated. For what this color is and what this ink is, it feels saturated enough. Um, now here I say it is mildly wet, 6.5. I'd actually say it's probably more like a, or here I say it's a 6. I think it is a 6.5. This is, this is a wet flowing ink. It's not crazy out of control wet, but it is noticeably wet. Now, uh, that Japanese fine took 15 seconds to dry because, again, this is a pretty wet flowing ink and this is 90 gram paper. And that, uh, that italic nib took 27, but as you can see, this smear went right off the page. Uh, yeah, but again, even here in the downstrokes, you can see that nice halo. But yeah, well behaved. No bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All good in that regard. And the water test, uh, considering the chromatography and the chemical test that I did, I was not expecting this much to remain behind. Is there much that's readable? No, not really. <laughs> part of the W, part of the A, part of the T, and then the further in we get, the less remains. And that Japanese fine is just, it's just gone. So, yeah, I would not call that recoverable, or at least not easily recoverable. Now next up is Fabriano Echo Qua. It's an 85 gram per square meter paper. I love it. The more I use it, the more I enjoy it. Here, we get largely more of the same. Um, fantastic shading, lovely color, uh, intense dark halo outline around the wettest parts. Really, really like that contrast. I mean, it just, it really draws the eye. It, it's quite eye-catching, it's popping. So, Japanese fine took 14 seconds to dry. That uh, italic nib took 25, which really isn't too bad, all things considered. Because that's a pretty big nib, and it's a pelican, and like every pelican ever, it's wet flowing, and that's, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, well behaved. Uh, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna get this on camera, and this is literally the only instance of this that I've found. So I want you to look at that dark halo at the end here. Oh, it's so small, I don't think I'm gonna get it on camera, but there's some sheen. There is a red sheen. Oh, there we go. In there. Uh, but yeah, that's the only time I've, I've really seen it. I was hoping that we'd get some halo sheen with this ink, but that's that's literally the only case in all of this that I found it. But And I didn't notice it until afterwards, so here I said no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. Yeah. But again, water test, that Japanese find is just gone. Dyed the page a little bit. Only the barest hint from that italic nib is showing, but actually the camera's increasing the contrast a little bit, so... Uh. Now, next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. And again, we have more of the same. Uh, despite being able to see some of the lines through the ink in the quadrilateral paper, uh, it doesn't feel undersaturated. And it, I mean, I, don't, I can't describe it. And maybe I seem like a hypocrite because I do come down on undersaturated inks pretty hard, but it looks good. It looks right and it has an intense vibrancy of color and you do get a ton of shading, you get a wide breadth of shading. And here you most certainly get an intense dark halo. It is very noticeable. Yeah. Now that Japanese fine took 13 seconds to dry. The italic took 26 and once again went clear off the page, smeared more than 20 millimeters. It's uh, yeah. So again, very well behaved, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All good in that regard. And again, water test, it's gone. In fact, it barely even dyed the page, and the Japanese find looks like it was never there, and only the tiniest bit, and again, the camera is increasing the contrast, uh, only the tiniest bit of the italic is left. So, yeah, not fun or easy to recover. 
Now, next up is Tumbleway River Paper, which is known for drawing out shading and sheen and dry times and echo. It didn't draw out sheen, which is unfortunate, and I did lay it on pretty thick to try and see if I could get some sheen, so there might be a little bit more noticeable echo at the back, but that's probably largely human error, because I really wanted to see if I could get it to sheen, and if it was going to sheen anywhere, it would be here. So yeah, we do get longer dry times, though. The Japanese fine took 16 seconds, and the italic took 30, but honestly, considering some of the dry times we've had on the other papers, that's really not bad. I was expecting something much worse. But yeah, here, especially without the lines from the quadrilateral, you really don't see it and think of it as thin. You do think of it as intense contrast with the shading, but it doesn't look thin on here. Although here we get, I'd say, the most intense dark halo we've seen so far, and it looks quite lovely. But yeah, uh, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no sheen. I think there is a little bit of echo. If there is, it's only with that italic, and it's only where you get that really dark halo effect. So, yeah, and again, that's always to taste, so, I mean, what's your preference? But yeah, this paper loves to let ink slide away when you add more water, and it really did. It barely dyed the page at all. That Japanese find is just gone. And, uh, yeah, that that italic is, is really, really gone. It's very faint. It's hard to read. Mm -hmm. Now for the three more mm, economically produced papers, uh, I only use that Japanese fine except to write the name. And this is the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. And that is really saying something because you know, it's, it's, it's awful. It's awful. I can all but guarantee you have something that's at least a step up from this. But here we get an intense amount of spread. So here's the line width on Tumbleway River where it is just like needle fine. And then here we get something that's almost more like a Western fine. So yeah, it's a definite line width increase. We lose all shading. There's no shading left here. However, the color is still bright, you know, and vibrant. It's intense, but we do get intense wooliness and feathering. It's really not good. Now I'm sure the wet flow wasn't helping, but still, uh, one second to dry, or I should say absorb, to sink into this very absorbent paper. Uh, yeah. And we get spots of bleed throughout, but I would like to point out that, you know, if we sort of pull back, you can see that a lot of it is up here, and particularly in this direction, and here much less so, which makes me think there's been environmental factors affecting the paper. So, yeah, but again, this is a wet flowing ink. And this is a Japanese find, so yes, it's very small, but uh, it's also scratchy, so it's possible I, I disturbed the, uh, the lay of the paper, but yeah. Now, this paper loves to freak out when you add water. Calm down, camera. And it absolutely did. You can see how the actual, like, topography of the paper was vastly affected. It actually started to fold in on itself. It's ugly looking. And it got much, much lighter, and it started to spread and overlap. It is, it is not good. Oh, camera, you really need to calm down. But, uh, yeah. Next up is Mead Notebook Paper. It's very common for school children in the United States. Yeah, it, uh, this is the kind you find in a spiral notebook, uh, not the kind you find in a composition notebook. That stuff feels more like newspaper. This stuff, uh, feathers like crazy. Um, and the last couple tests it hasn't, but here it kind of did. I mean, not like intensely, but where it does feather, it's those like long, like talony kind of feathers where, you know, they do kind of catch your eye and it's not great. And of course, I'm not finding any of them right now. There we go. There are a few. Uh, so it's not everywhere, but where they are, they're pretty hard to miss. Now, it took two and a half seconds to dry. I typically have like very minor shading. It's actually hard to see. But um, we get much less spread than we did on the 20 pound. You can see that the line width remained much more narrow. So that's rather nice. Uh, there are some spots of show through, but there's no bleed. So you can see it's all very opaque. If anything, it's very light. So yeah, that's clearly me scratching through the page because again, like I said, I'm terrible writing with this thing. But, and this kind of surprised me, you can see that water test. 
I mean, if the camera is going to calm down. It did get lighter, but it didn't feather, it didn't explode, it didn't freak out. You could recover that. And I just, if you've seen many of my tests, a lot of times this paper will just make ink do crazy, crazy things. This is not crazy. This is quite contained. It barely dyed the page. It is absolutely readable. It's absolutely recoverable. Yeah, if you had to recover that, you could. And that's not bad. Now, lastly is moleskin notebook paper, which is terrible. Period. Full stop. That's it. Um, it's terrible. And it's a mess. So it took five seconds to soak in. Uh, and you can actually see the pulp that was mashed into paper. It's a hideous woolly texture. We get lots of feathering. It's just really ugly. It's, it's not good. To, it's not pleasant to look at. Um, the color kind of remains the same. So it's still, it's still, you know, that like intense aqua, but yeah, this is not me just scratching through the page. That is that right there. These like very distinct dark lines. That probably was me scratching the page, but not everywhere. Not all of this. This actually full on bled through <sighs> Like, like got onto the page below. That's, that's, with a Japanese, fine. And not like a super dark ink and not one that's like intensely saturated. That's, that's no good. Now, the water test absolutely freaked out. Calm down, camera. It like half exploded, half feathered. It faded. It's like, it almost like just started to like seep in and it, it's not fun. That is not easy to read. That would not be fun to try and recover, especially if you had like a whole page or multiple pages. Yeah, uh, well, that's moleskin for you. So yeah, there you go. Um, something tells me I'm gonna have to scan this, so I will not be putting it in the box yet. Yeah, there you go. There's Pelican's Edelstein Jade. It's a beautiful aqua color. It's uh, slightly wet. It uh, shades beautifully. It has this really intense dark halo, which if you're like me and you like on premium papers, you get it all over the place. It's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, so there you go for your consideration from the Triple N Network. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.